Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, wake up. <laughs> and get connected. Before you get deceived. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody going through it? Well, thank God you're going through it. Please don't get stuck there. Amen. Matthew 24, verse 3. Now, as he, Jesus, sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Everyone say privately. And they say, tell us when these things are about to happen. Well, what's going to go on? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? What is the sign of your coming? The sign of your coming. See, they were with Jesus the whole time, but they knew he was coming back again, even though he was going to go through everything and rise from the dead. Amen? They knew everything that was going to happen to them and wanted to know what was going on in the end. And Jesus said, in answer, he said to them, he said, take heed that no one deceive you, number one. <laughs> no one deceive you. Don't get deceived. Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. Now, there's be careful what you agree with. Be careful what you put before your eyes. Be careful what you read. Be careful what you hear. Be careful. Why? Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, doesn't he? He's looking for access in every area of our life. He said, for many will come in my name saying I am the Christ or a Christian and will deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, not brought into fear. For all these things must come to pass, but the end's not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. In other words, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. What we're seeing right now, a rise of political against political. Why? Because there's a battle over seats of position. There's a battle over evil wickedness against righteousness and justice. There's a tremendous battle right now, not only in this country, but in every country, nation, continent, and island globally. The righteous are finally getting up. They're finally an awakening. That's what this awakening is about. They've been sitting under blessed assurance too long, doing nothing. They're receiving all the blessings from God and doing nothing with them. And God is beginning to turn some of these blessings into curses. So to cause them to move. You know, when a bird, it's time to fly. Mama makes the nest very uncomfortable. So wherever they try and sit, they get poked. Ooh! Finally, they want out of that nest. God begins to bring things uncomfortable to get people to move. He said, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines. Now we got coronavirus. Sounds like an alcohol disease. It's probably man-made anyways. I want you to understand that Satan's kingdom is releasing all kinds of plagues. What God is warning us is what's gonna, not coming from God. 
He didn't come to steal, kill, and destroy. He came to bring life and life abundantly. He's warning us what the powers of darkness are going to be releasing in this end time. He's saying they're going to make plagues. They're going to make pestilence. They're going to make all kinds of things. What they call a deep state, which is Satan's kingdom, is going to do everything they can, release chemtrails. They're going to do everything they can to bring down, dumb down population and mankind's perception. I'm going to say that again, population and perception. We've never had so much bipolar. We've had no, never so much schizophrenia. Now they got vaccinations that are now manifesting in people who are now adults when they took them. People have no idea what mercury does to you. It's a killer. They've been injecting people since they've been born. That's what happened to me. Probably why half of us became drug addicts. We were infected with it. It was just time released. Dope. Dope. That's why they call it dope. We become stupid. Amen? Then they, then they fake this out and put it in liquid bottles. Then they put it in the pill. Then they put it on TV. Then they put it on Google. Now, wherever you look, it's everywhere. And that's what he's saying. Look at it. everywhere you look, it's, you're going to be bombarded with all kinds of distractions that prevent you from knowing me, from following me. Money will be your number one interference because the God of this world is associated with money. That's how he plays people. People rely on their talents and abilities and strengths and pride, which has no entrance to the kingdom of God. But it's rejected by God. For what man exalts, God hates. And there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. And these earthquakes are not only, they're not just natural. It's because there's a lot of bombardment underneath the ground. A lot of bombs going off. A lot of righteous that are now bombing underground deep military bases owned by Satan's kingdom. It's happening globally. He said, these will be this, the beginning of sorrows. We've been in the beginning of sorrows for a while now. Amen? That means we're getting ready to come out of the beginning of the sorrows into tribulation. Then we enter great tribulation. This is a prophetic time of warning. In other words, these are things that are approaching even greater. These will be challenges, persecutions, disappointments, a lot of betrayals, great deception, uprisings. There'll be a lot of sickness, fears, lies. There's going to be a lot of shaking and quaking going on. He says something here if we follow a little bit further. He says, then they will deliver you up to tribulation or they're going to attempt to kill you and You'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake, and then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. That's what we call the media. They are false prophets deceiving many right now. And many people are listening to them and becoming as stupid as they are. And because of lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Man, there's a lot of miserable people out there, man. And it's amazing. You go to even, like, wherever you go to buildings and whatever. You, I mean, they're miserable. Every time they have a Democratic person on TV, he looks miserable or she looks miserable. It's because they're demonized. Demons don't bring joy. Hallelujah. We see it. It's terrible. He said it in verse 13. And many, in verse 12, many, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who what? Endures to the end will be what? That's a reward. It's called a blessed reward. How many of y'all want a blessed reward? You know, the word says that it rains on the good and evil, on the wicked and the righteous. 
but it's what you do with it. See, the righteous are to turn it to be a blessing and bring glory to God. The wicked, they use it. But you know what? That's their blessing. That's it. That's it. They use it for self-gain, pleasure, wrong things. That is the reward. There is no reward home. This is the reward temporary. Believe me, you live in fornication, you're a thief, you're a liar, you ain't getting away with nothing. I don't care how many times you go to church, I don't care how much you tithe. The word says those who are drunk or drug addicts, liars, perjurers, extortioners, fornicators, will not enter the kingdom of God. But I accepted Jesus. No, you rejected Jesus because you chose not to follow his ways. You're still playing your game in your ways, and it ain't going to work. And verse 14, and he said, In this gospel, the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Well, now we got satellites going up constantly. There's one company that's planning on putting 12,000 satellites up. That's a lot of satellites. They're resetting everything right now. They just sent up, I forgot how many, uh, 1,200 or something like that. Or they're, 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 uh, It's incredible what's going on because the battle is taken off the earth now into the heavenlies. It's taken into space. That's why we got a space army now, space military. Of course, it's been around for the last 10 years, but people don't know it. We already have spacecraft. We already have ships out there. We saw one land about three months ago, four months ago, but nobody really reported it. It's been out in orbit in space for over two years. There's all kinds of things that man doesn't know, but it's okay. God's going to bring it all down right in front of them and right in front of us. And we must be prepared for everything that's getting ready to happen. You know... Again, those who endure to the end will be blessed. They'll have a blessed reward. It's called salvation. To be blessed is to be rewarded. Everyone say to be blessed is to be rewarded. There's three levels of reward, what we call blessings. There's temporary, there's personal, and there's eternal. Those are three. There's temporary, personal, and eternal. Second Peter chapter 1. Bless rewards. How many of y'all want them all? Amen. <laughs> That's when the Lord says, do you want a full reward or partial? See, some people only work for the temporary rewards. Some people only work for personal rewards, but not enough work for eternal rewards. Second Peter chapter one. Everybody okay? Oh happy days. Welcome to Sunday morning live. Where the word of God is worth the drive. Hallelujah. You know, you don't people don't realize that, especially when things you don't want to do, there's a blessing right behind it. Especially because God is always checking out. You're going you're to live by how you feel or you're going to live by what I say. That's that constant battle within us all the time, even in the mind, you know. Oh, man, it's just too dry, far to drive. Heaven's a far long way too, you know. He came down for us. Now it's our time to go to up to him. <laughs> so everything in this area, you know, there's challenges all the time. The enemy's going to try to challenge you. He's going to try to cause you to uh, distractions and everything else. Anything to prevent you from maintaining that connection, from, from hearing God, from obeying from following. He's going to do everything he can because he's come to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's going to try and prevent a blessing from coming to you. 
Or he's going to try to turn that blessing into a curse. That's what the enemy does. Things may start off great and all of a sudden they turn around. Because there's something that wasn't maintained. You and him. You and him. When that's not maintained, things begin to become cursed. Amen. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Let's speak it. Grace. What's grace mean? God's plan of what? Escape. And peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. For his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be what? Partakers. Can you partake of something without cooperation? No. That you may be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. See, this is where that... Um, I guess, what, what do you call it? Uh, uh, people want something for nothing. You know, they want a handout for everything. Yeah, no, they, there's no price for it. Everything is a price, no matter what it is. Freedom is a price. There's a price for everything. You know, I've, the, major, the price is cooperation. Amen? You're either going to cooperate or you're not. You can have a check and it can be in your pocket for the rest of your life and it's no going to do you no good. You can have a million dollars in your home and it's still do you no good unless you do something with it. Amen. Verse 5. But also for this reason, giving all diligence, add, your, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither what? Barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who lacks these things is short-sighted and even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and your election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. That means you have earned protection. I'm going to say that again. You've earned protection. That is a reward from God. It is a blessing from God to protect you. Does everybody get that? Remember, because what did the Lord say to Satan? Have you considered my servant Job, who is an upright man and shuns evil? And what did Satan say? Well, you put a protection around him. Why? Because he's an upright man that shuns evil. Does everybody get it? And God protected him. That was his reward. Everybody okay? Oh, verse 11. Verse 11. For so an entrance will be an entrance, an entrance to where? Not Target. Amen? This is not Publix or anything else. This is an entrance to eternal, not temporary. For an, so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we know that he's given us plan of escape by cooperation, you will receive a reward. It's called salvation. You will have an entrance given to you. Every level has a reward. It is released when the conditions are meant. Does everybody understand it? When you meet the conditions, a, re a release is uh, given. Entrance into eternal kingdom is an eternal reward. Again, there's three rewards. Temporary, personal, and eternal. Temporary, personal, and eternal. And eternal. James chapter 1. Is a gift a reward? Yeah. You can't get salvation either. But you must desire the gifts. Amen. You must desire the spiritual gifts. That's a desire given by God. James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Curse. In other words, you are blessed. You're rewarded by God Almighty. Blessed is the man or woman who endures temptation. For when he has been approved... 
So he's going to share with you, look at, God's going to see your temptations. He's going to see your challenges. Amen? If you endure them, you're going to receive a reward. Now, if you don't, you lose one. See, people don't realize that there's a give and take to everything. There is something that you don't know will be lost. You don't realize what it's going to be. You have no idea. Why? Because we make place to the devil. The Bible says, make no place to the devil. What seems to be going beautiful and everything's going great. Yes, hallelujah. What well, awesome. What the heck happened? Something went wrong. There was an area where you opened the door, and it's been open the whole time. You just didn't know it. Amen? You just didn't know it. That's why it's important to go through that process, converting the soul. That's why it's important to go through the process, deliverance. It's important going through these processes. Why? As you go through these things, you are seeing things, you're making confession, and you're shutting doors. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. All right, let's go a little further. It says here, Blessed is the man who endures, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who what? Love him. Crown of life is salvation. Amen. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires, lusts, and enticed. Now listen, so when you cooperate with that desire to fulfill your flesh, then it, when a desire has conceived, in other words, when you agree, it's conceived. It's going to bring a birth to something. Every time you agree with sin, transgression, or iniquity, it will birth something. So you've got to remember the devil's trying to use you to birth something evil into this realm. So everybody got that? When a desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. So the enemy is trying to use us to bring forth an open door that leads to death in this realm. Remember, he cannot enter this realm without the influence of using a man or be invited into this realm. People don't realize that when Obama was president, he invited every demon into this realm. He invited them all. He had to confess it. It says, do not be deceived, my brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. For of his own will he has, be, he has brought us forth by the what? Word of truth. Word of truth. That we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. To be a first fruit. Many of us are first fruits of our family. Blessed, rewarded by God, who rejects, resists, departs, attacks, and removes evil. <laughs> what are these? These are evil agreements that either promote or bring a touch of evil. So an individual that is actually overcoming, rejecting, is rejecting, resisting, departing, and attacking and removal the influence of evil. You can try and resist it, but the Bible says submit to God, then you can what? Resist. So many people try to resist without submitting to God, and it doesn't resist. Psalm 73. Hallelujah. Bless rewards. Verse 1, let's speak it truly. God is good to 
Israel, which means he's good to us too, to such as are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He, he, now, I want to re, go back over here. He said, that, he said, my steps had nearly slipped. I had almost stumbled when I saw what? The prosperity of the wicked. He became what? Envious or jealous. He realized it was a stumbling block to him. Should be a stumbling block to anybody. For although no, there are no pangs in death, there, for there are no pangs in their death, but their strength is firm. For they are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Why? Right, because their money buys their way out. Therefore, pride serves as their necklace, or what I want to say, leash. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than heart could wish. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore, his people return here, and waters of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who are always at ease. They increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I had said I will speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought of how to understand this, when I thought of how to understand this, I just don't get it. Why are all these, why are the wicked being blessed and prosperous all the time? Why are all of these happening to the righteous? Why, why isn't the whole body blessed like crazy, like they should be? First of all, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen. He says, no, make no place for the devil. We're more accountable than the world is. But he says something very profound here because he didn't understand this. I wanted to understand this. Verse 16, when I thought how to understand all this, it was too painful for me until something. Until I went into the sanctuary, gathered with my brothers and sisters, worshiped and praised the Lord together, and I got peace, joy, and righteousness and direct connection and understanding. I was able to see things through then. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood the end of the wicked. Oh, yeah. Envies of the wicked, prosperity, and strength. <laughs> Their thoughts. In other words, how can, how can this be happening? Remember, the ruler of this earth is Satan. Amen? His deception, fear, using wealth, fame, and technology to control his puppets with evil presence. But when I came into the higher level of God's presence, the higher level of God's presence is released when we are gathered together. A better interpretation came. A relation came. Something else came, which brings a personal, personal blessing, a personal reward. It's called vision and revelation. That's personal. What's personal? Vision and revelation is a personal reward. Proverbs 11. What's prosperity? It's a temporary reward. Amen? So the wicked are all relying on a temporary reward. Everything is temporary. It's all gone, going to go away. But you and I are not looking for just the temporary. We utilize the temporary to advance eternal. If you're not utilizing the temporary to advance eternal, then you're considered wicked. 
Romans or Proverbs 11. Is everybody all right? Hallelujah. Blessed rewards. And verse um, 16, Proverbs eleven sixteen. 16. Let's speak it together. A gracious woman retains honor. 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 You know, when you think about honor, what is, you know, honor. Honor is an area of respect. Amen? Why? Because the, this woman keeps herself and a wicked one doesn't touch her. But ruthless men retain riches. Verse 17. The merciful man does, does good for his own soul, but he who is cruel troubles his own flesh. The wicked man does deceptive work, but he who sows righteousness will have a sure reward. As righteousness leads to what? Life. So practicing righteousness is an eternal reward. So he who pursues evil pursues it to his own death. Those who are of a perverse heart are an abomination to the Lord. But the blameless in their ways are his delight. Though they join forces, the wicked will not go unpunished. But the prosperity of the righteous will be what? Delivered. In other words, what you have will be protected. Everybody got it? Which is temporary anyways. Matthew 5. This is called temporary reward. Amen? Prosperity is what? A temporary reward. People think that their prosperity is going to hold forever. No. It slowly twinkles and drizzles away. Matthew 5. When you can't rely on your bank accounts, your prosperity, and that's when people usually run to the Lord when they got nothing else left of the temporary. Matthew five. Is everybody there? In verse three. Let's speak it together. Blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Is that eternal, temporary, or personal? Eternal. Amen. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be what? Comforted. That's temporary. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That's. Well, actually, the other one would have been personal. Comfort. For is personal. Blessed are those who mourn, for they are comforted. That's personal. Amen. That's your personal. Blessed are the, those who are meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That's temporary. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, so they shall be what? Filled. That's personal. Blessed are the merciful, so they shall obtain mercy. That's personal. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's eternal. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. That is also eternal. You might call it personal, too, but it's still connected eternally. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, which we know is eternal. Verse 11. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. <laughs> Again, there's eternal, personal, and temporary rewards. Psalm 18. It should always be focusing on eternal, not temporary. Psalm 18. In verse 20, 
It says, the Lord rewarded me according to my what? Righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. Now, righteousness is not only eternal, but it can be temporary and personal. It can be all three at one time by producing the fruits of righteousness. Verse 21. I have kept the ways of the Lord. He's sharing how he was rewarded. I have kept the ways of the Lord, and, and I have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were what? Before me. Come on, read it. All his judgments were what? Before me. In other words, everything about God that pertains to life here for me was before me. Everything is always before me. What he says, what he does, what I'm supposed to do, whatever. It's always before us. It's our direction. It's our counsel. It's our correction. That's why he says, make sure that my words are in your sight. Amen? For all his judgments were before me. I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. What does he say? With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. With the blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. With, and with the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. You will save the humble people and bring down the haughty looks. Powerful. It's a blessed reward, it's a blessed reward from God. When God blesses, he also grants you favor. There's a favor. Sometimes it's not just a reward. It's an area of favor. Amen. That's a reward in itself. You had favor. You had favor when you went to court. Amen. You had favor of police officer letting you go. You had favor somewhere along the line. Even when you did something incorrect, he knew your heart was right before him. Look at how many favors David had. King David. Amen. Boy, that dude blew it many times. But he was a man after God's heart. He wanted to please him no matter what he went through. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 12 verse 1. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Why? <laughs> Those are his rewards. He was a man that chased after God. Amen? There was something that he did. When you are living in this realm, and we call that realm of faith, you said goodbye to the world. But the world didn't say goodbye to you. Verse 2, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows such a, a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressibly words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will boast, yet not of myself I will not boast, except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be. Or hears from me. In other words, he maintained a humble spirit. He had visions and revelations. Our personal rewards between you and God. There are things that are personal. And the word says that without these, restraints are not maintained. See, when there's not personal rewards from God, you look for something else. That's where people drift. 
they fall for another reward. They'll start putting, they start replacing things and putting more things into something, more time into something else. They get a fulfillment. Psalm 40, uh, no, let's go to 2 Corinthians 9 while we're here. In verse 6, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. Is everybody there? But this I say, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. So let each one give as they, he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necess necessity, for God loves a what? Cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always have all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. For it is written, He has dispersed abroad. Now, wait a minute, is that temporary, eternal, or personal? That's temporary. Everybody got it? He has given to the poor. That's personal. His righteousness endures forever. That's eternal. Now, now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for, for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberty or for what we call freedom, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. For the administration of the service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also is abounding through many thanksgiving to God. While through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. And by their prayer for you who long for you because of exceeding the grace of, you in, uh, of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Psalm 41. Psalm 41. Oh, it's good to hear the pages turning on a Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Psalm 41. Everybody there? Glory. First three verses. Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. He will be blessed on the earth. This is all temporary. You will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness, and you will sustain him on his sickbed. Wow. It's personal, amen, but temporary also, isn't it? So we know that these are rewards. He who considers the poor. In other words, he helps. He hands out, which is a temporary. People still need food for temporary, unfortunately. Hallelujah. Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Hallelujah. Well, we can't live without water. That's why Jesus said, listen, man, every man, you can't only live so long by this, but you can live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's amazing how many people do not rely on the Word of God. They don't rely on it. They don't even read it. They cannot not, they, you cannot make it. You just can't make it. If you don't have the Word, you ain't going to make it. But it better be back by the Spirit. Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord when I feel like it, all times, 
His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. If he hears you, does he reward you? Yeah. And he delivered me from all of my fears. They looked at him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Where is he delivering us from? In, from the temporary, in the temporary realm, amen? These are all temporary rewards, but they could be eternal ones, right? If you can continue on that way. Verse 8, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O fear the Lord, you his saints, for there is no lack or want to those who fear him. That's reverence, honor, and respect him. And you can't do that without a relationship. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek, everyone says seek, the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Those who seek the Lord. Many don't seek the Lord. They call on his name for help all the time, but they don't seek him. Amen? Trust, seek. So we see that there's temporary, eternal, and personal rewards here. Look at the, the verse 11. Come, children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is a man that desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them on the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them, and he delivers them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and have such as have a contrite spirit. It says many of the afflictions are the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of all of them. He will guard their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil shall slay wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Wow. Galatians 6. Galatians 6. In verse 7, Galatians 6, verse 7, do not be deceived. God's not mocked. For whatever man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will reap everlasting life. Let, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. You know, there's two things that are meeting conditions in healing. One of them is a level of faith, and the other one is a level of sowing. Why? You sow in the Spirit. You must sow your way out of everything. That means you speak the word, you decree you're speaking, you're speaking, you're speaking to what? To you're connected to where you believe it. Amen? Now your faith is increased. Faith by comes, hear, by, comes by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. The more it comes out of your mouth, the more it increases. So you're not only sowing in the spirit, you're reaping life. Amen? So there's a level of healing that we must reach in the condition. The more you sow, that's why when when I was in the healing ministry, not that we're still not in it, but when I was involved in uh, miracle signs and wonders in a ministry, we used to bring people in and we, we would set them a, a, and put videos in so they'd watch other people get healed. And we would in increase their faith. Amen? And then we would give them prayers to speak. And when they came into the service, they, many of them got healed. Because what two things were reached? A condition of sowing and a condition of faith. And healing comes. 
Hallelujah. Go to Luke 6. Luke 6. Glory. Luke 6, verse 27. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, and do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, Offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, do also to them likewise. But if you love those who love you, what credit is it that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is it? that to you, for even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies, do good, lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be what? Great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. That is your storage. This means that there's multiple rewards, temporary, eternal, and personal. For with the same measure that you use it, it will be measured back to you. So even when God gives you and blesses you with this reward, how are you going to use it? See, people forget about that. So many times they spend it on their own selfish pleasures. Don't realize that they're actually bringing a curse on themselves. Hello? There's nothing wrong with blessing yourself, amen, to that, because you know it's from God. But what you're blessed with, we don't look forward to us first. We look forward to him first. What is it? What am I supposed to do with this, Lord? Everything we get, everything we get donated, Lord, what do you want us to do? Every car we get donated, Lord, who is it for? What do you want us to do with it? And then we wait. It doesn't mean whatever blessing you have is for you. Amen? Amen. It could be for somebody else. 1 John chapter 3. 1 Remember, we're a part of the storehouse of God. He's the source, but we're a resource now. Unless you're a t- First John chapter 3. And again, I want to share this because I've, I, I, for some reason, I don't know why, but I, I hear this a lot. Yeah, I've been blessed with a new car. Yeah, my payments are $4,000 a month or something like this, you know. That ain't a blessing, man. Hello. The enemy wants to get you in debt. That's his objective. Because then you've got to serve money. Amen? I hate that. It's, it's evil. It brings people in such bondage. It's incredible. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. 
Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be what? Like, what a reward. Oh, come on. That's, that, that should do it right there. For we shall see him as he is, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. A seeker will not sin. Doesn't mean he won't make a mistake, but he won't let sin reign in him. Amen? Whoever sins is neither seen nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil is sin from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God, it was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not do these things that displease God. Hmm. Sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. And I'm going to close at Psalm 1. Bless reward. Your rewards turn into a curse. Oh, happy days. Psalm 1. Three types, three levels of reward. Temporary, personal, and eternal. Amen. Verse 1, let's speak it. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, so cursed is the man who does. That's simple enough. Listen, when you start struggling, don't call people that are not in, not in fellowship. I'm going to tell you right now, stop calling people that are not in fellowship. If they ain't in fellowship, don't call them. Yeah, I need your opinion. <laughs> don't call them. You ain't going to get the right opinion. They'll be soulish, misleading. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's called rebellion. How many of y'all know there's a reward for rebellion? And it ain't a blessing. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law, uh, which is the truth, the word of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night, or he sets it before him so he knows which way to go. He shall be like a tree planted by what? The ri rivers of water. That brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither. And whatever he does shall what? Prosper. Wow. But the ungodly are not so, the rebellious are not so. But they are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the day of reward of judgment. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Bless the Lord all my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name and forget not his benefits. Those are rewards. Amen. Who forgives my iniquities, heals my diseases, crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies, rescues my life from destruction, renews my youth like the eagles, puts good things in my mouth to seal everything he just promised. Promises, benefits, rewards. Temporary, personal, and eternal. Everything is to be used for his glory and bring you home safely. Amen. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for your word. Seal it, protect it, and let it grow and bear fruit for your glory.